Thanks, Deb. We head back to the Broughton Archipelago tonight for more on the fish farm debate. Here's Deb now with tonight's Inside Deb. Well, tonight, Tony, we get straight to the heart of the matter and head to one of the many fish farms located in the waters of the Broughton Archipelago. Norwegian-owned Marine Harvest is the biggest fish farming company in the world and the largest here in B.C. as well. Their techniques have come a long way since fish farming started in the 80s. Between some of the strictest regulations in the world and a new chemical the company's using, Federal Fisheries says the numbers of sea lice on wild salmon hit a record low last year. Our Catherine Pope got a first-hand look at what the farms are doing to make sure their sites are as sea-friendly as can be. Fish farming is a $600 million industry in B.C. In the Broughton Archipelago, there are 29 salmon farming operations. And with demand for fish growing, world aquaculture output is expected to surpass beef production by 2010. And our major market, of course, is the United States, where we cannot keep up with the demand for salmon. It's a growing market, and we want to be able to ensure that we've got our place in it. Fish farms today operate under some of the strictest guidelines in the world. This is one of the plants owned by Marine Harvest, BC's biggest fish farmer. A half a million Atlantic salmon have been raised here over the last two years. We can provide a, uh, a product 12 months a year, a, a beautiful product that makes it to the market. You know, it can leave from the farm here uh, today and it can be on a plate in Vancouver the day after tomorrow. This is our camera that we use to view the fish feeding. The fish are monitored using the latest technology. Feeding time happens once a day for about 15 minutes. What's happening below the surface is washed closely using an underwater camera. Now we feed with cameras so that we don't have any pellets falling to the ocean floor. And we also look at fish behavior. Mm. So once that school drops, we know that to stop the feeding. Despite modern techniques, there are still questions about the problem of sea lice, the little organisms that have caused a big controversy over whether they're killing the wild salmon. Aren't these essentially incubators for sea lice? If we didn't manage around it, yes, they would be. But the fact is, through proper husbandry practices and through the ability to use a drug to eliminate the, the uh, sea lice, we can ensure that through the critical period of February to May that we have virtually zero sea lice on our salmon. The latest weapon in the battle against sea lice is injected into the feed pellets of farmed fish. Since the introduction of the drug called SLICE a few years ago, sea lice levels have dropped dramatically. The Department of Fisheries and Oceans has a mandate to protect the wild salmon stocks, and concerns about sea lice have prompted their scientists to once again look at the impacts. We're well aware that there are often high concentrations of uh, adult sea lice on adult salmon when they return to spawn in the fall, and the summer and fall, but we'd never looked at juvenile salmon. And despite years of research, the DFO has yet to come to any definitive conclusions. BC salmon farming industry employs about 3,000 in full-time, year-round jobs, most of them in the processing plants. Industry executives are certain their science proves farmed fish are not hurting BC's wild salmon. There's no way salmon farming has had any effect on the wild stocks out here in BC. In fact, Roberts actually believes he's saving the wild fish stocks. I'm a proud salmon farmer and there's uh, many proud salmon farmers standing behind me and we really do feel like through fish culture, again whether that's enhancement, ranching or farming, that we are protecting the wild stocks. Once these fish are harvested, the Norwegian billionaire owner will gross about 1.8 million dollars from this site, one of 40 the company owns in BC. Tomorrow, what the anti-fish farming scientists claim. And you can get much more information on fish farms in British Columbia by logging on to www.salmonfarmers.org. <clears throat> Pardon me, there is one other fish farm note. We found out today that some of that same plastic manufacturing material, melamine, that made thousands of North American pets sick, 
has turned up in fish meal used by B.C. salmon farms. Agriculture Minister Pat Bell confirmed the feed went to some B.C. farms, but he adds that there is no danger to human health because the food was only used for very young fish, meaning there's virtually no chance that the fish or the contamination would have made it to the food chain. And Tony, that's tonight's insight.